stand and worship together. Praise God from whom blessings flow. Praise Him, our creatures here below. Praise Him, our lovely heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. One day every tongue will confess. Bless you, our God. One day every knee will bow. Still, our greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Oh, come. Now is the time to worship. Oh, come. Is the time to give your heart? Oh, come just as you are to worship. Oh, come just as you are before your One day every tongue will confess to you, our God. One day every knee will bow. Still our greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. time to give your heart. Oh, come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, just as you are before your God. Oh, come, God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye heavenly seated. Welcome, folks. It's good to worship you this morning, with you this morning. Let me remind you of some of the things that are happening here in the life of the church. Tomorrow is President's Day, and as we always do on President's Day, we go Tubin at Mount Pleasant. We're going to meet here at noon, and we're going to be Tubin from 12.30 to 2.30, being back here about 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. This is for anybody who is, uh, I think it's 42 inches or taller that can come with us. We have, we had to reserve at least 15 spots for uh, the youth group and, and children to go to. So if you want to go, please see me, um, and and we can make that arrangement for you. And that's for anybody who's 42 inches or taller. Um, so you may want to measure yourself today when you go home. Um, uh, safe sanctuaries trainings. Uh, we have one this coming Wednesday, which is going to be at 5:30 with pizza. Um, we're also going to do it at on Saturday, March 
12. So this is for anyone who works with, with uh, the ministries of the church um, involving anybody that's uh, 17 or years or younger in the church. We also have, uh, if you can believe it or not, we're talking about Vacation Bible School, and we're going to be talking about that on Thursday night at uh, 7 o'clock. And where are you guys going to meet at? Are you going to Fellowship Hall, possibly, or somewhere around the church? Just Okay, yeah, so we're going to be talking about Vacation Bible School. Please join us at 7 o'clock. Uh, the, the other thing to know is that Grow Kids continues to, not, to, to meet tonight at 6 o'clock, but, but because of tubing, the youth group will not meet tonight. Um, and then uh, there is no weekly Bible study this week because I'm going to be away for some uh, continuing ed. Uh, and, and just to let you know that we are going to do a, a great worship service on Ash Wednesday, which is March 2nd, with the Complete with the Choir um, and that's going to be at 7 o'clock, so you can come and get communion, uh, celebrate Ash Wednesday with us, um, and um, we'll be dispersing ashes. It's a great way to start Lent together, as you can imagine, it's coming really fast now. Um, and one other thing to, to encourage you on is, if you have not taken your spiritual gift assessment test, please do so. Um, Jason Caldwell has made it very easy for us to find it on the website. Um, it's on the Facebook page, too. It's a little bit harder to find on the Facebook page. You have to scroll around a little bit. We're trying to put links on it all over the place, but um, it's really easy to find on the website if you want to take it there. Um, if you want to take it on a hard copy and you don't do computers, there's a little bit more questions, and you'll have to score it in a certain way. But uh, uh, Or you can just come here in the church, and we'll do it with you. So please, please be a part of that with us. Uh, next week, we're going to be celebrating our spiritual gifts, and we're going to be uh, celebrating it with art, and, and a, a conference specialist, Connie Betts, will be with us to talk about spiritual gifts and how that can help move us forward as a church. Uh, so with that said, is there any other announcements here um, to be lifting up? Okay, well, if the kids want to come forward for uh, a time with Tiffany, and let's begin our worship in the name of God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's stand and worship.
worthy is the Sorry, I'm just playing in whatever key I feel like. Jesus, your name is power. may be seated. I am humbled. I am humbled today to serve with these folks at, at this church. Tiffany, that was a great message for the kids to remember 
that we need to have faith like children. Um, what a good message that was. And to, to serve with the praise band. As we talk about gifts, I am honored and, and blessed to serve with you all for the kingdom of God. So let's look at the scripture passage that we're looking at today. It's from the book of Ephesians. Uh, and Paul writes this in chapter 4. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the the evangelists, the pastors, and, and teachers to equip the people, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be Infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there. And, and, and by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth to, in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in its love as each part does its, part, its work. This is God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord God, as we look at this word from Ephesians and as we think about gifts, we pray that your Holy Spirit, like the song that we just sang, would just be evident here. And that we would feel the movement, that we would know our place, and that we would work and honor you. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. So, um, one of the things that I don't have to struggle with in my life anymore are bad hair days. In fact, <laughs> I don't even have hair days. Um, I th the reality for... Um, and I see other people here that are like this. The reality for some of us is hair today, gone tomorrow. Um, I've actually had dreams where I've woken up and, and I've looked into the mirror and there I have this nice head of hair again. Um, and I, I have to decide which way am I going to part it today. Or, or I'm standing there with the wind just blowing through it once again. And... and and then I also have dreams where it's so long that I have to pull it apart to look through. Because I did have days where mom said, you need to go to the barber and get a trim. But those days are gone. You know, the truth is, I had to part with my hair. Get it? <laughs> part with my hair. Um, and, and those hair days, they're, they're not coming back anytime soon. You know, I am looking forward for the day when Jesus comes back and we live in the new Jerusalem and my head will be restored and it will become a fertile place, growing place, a place for hair to grow once again. You know, when you walk into the, the kingdom of heaven, you, I'll be the one with the hair. You know, um, I had it once, but things change. Isn't that somewhat what the church is going through? Things are changing, and the way it was may never be the same again. It is a new time. It really is. We may dream of things the, of the way it was before and hoping for that, but it has probably changed for good. It is difficult. It is challenging and somewhat empowering in ways. You know, as a bald person... It would be pathetic for me if I sat and complained and said, I don't have hair. 
I'm not going out into the world again. I'm just going to sit in my room, constantly complain, or maybe I'll just wear a ball cap or a comb over. Um, I, I now have to realize that I live differently. If there are bright lights, that my head may be blinding to other people. You know, the same tr is true for the church. We cannot sit and complain. We have to move forward. We have to be confident. We need to be strong. In a time that is different, we need to be different. It is a, a different time, and it looks really different. And you know what? Those good old days, they are not coming back anytime soon. So the question becomes, what do we do? You know, that's been my prayer. What do we do? Um, and I believe the answer with all my heart is our gifts, our spiritual gifts. We are limiting, limiting God, I believe, if we say that the, the, the gifts were given for such a time. They are for changing time. And like Bob Dylan said, if you remember, I quote, the times, they are a-changing. You know, if you can imagine that the early church had its challenges. It's a, it was a brand new movement, if we look at the book of Acts. Um, and things were new, and, and they were evolving and, and changing as something new would. And the older, more established movement was frustrated with that. And, and, and they, they were challenged by it. Sound familiar? Well, the early church used their gifts, if you look at it, to edify the church, to help the church, to help the church grow, and it grew amazingly. It, it was a way to show the world who they were and who they were truly connected to. Ephesians says that Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Look at that list. Do you see uh, yourself up there? Now, these, these uh, titles are a little bit inhibiting to some of us. But li listen to this. An, ap an apostle is someone who is sent. An evangelist is someone who shares the gospel, and sometimes without words. The message... Uh, and he shares the message of Christ, he or she. A pastor is someone who cares for the flock, not just the one who's up here preaching on Sunday morning. And teachers are someone who helps teach the truth, maybe even by the way that they live. And the purpose of these people are to build up the family. And, and, and then we need to see if the whole family is connected so the many gifts can be used. And we are in unity with the head being that of Jesus Christ. Maybe the first thing we need to think about as we come together is why do we do church? Why do we? Or, or, um, or maybe it is a check that we need to take from time to time why are we being a church? Why are, you, why are we even here? Are you here to fulfill your church thing for the week? Well, check, you got that done. Are you here because your family has always gone here? Are they still here? Are you here because you like the bald guy who speaks on Sunday morning? Well, he likes you, but we could meet for coffee too. We should be here to find out and explore what it means to be servant-hearted. Yes, we should have fellowship and friendship, but we should be servants most of all. Have you checked lately? Why do you go to church? Why are you at church? Why, uh, maybe you need to know who Jesus is. We all need to know that, and we need to be reminded constantly and we need to experience the true servanthood of Christ as he came to be the servant of us all. But I think, and maybe you're seeing this too, the church is starting to look different 
than it ever has before. We are worshiping in ways that I would have never predicted. So therefore, our servanthood is probably going to look different too. But God has gifted us for such a time as this. God really has. And the truth of the matter is that these days, these days that we're living now, may be the good old days for future generations. Why not make it be the best that we can possibly make it? As a believer, a follower of Christ, we all have been given gifts according to Scripture. And it can be said then, as a Christian, I have a gift or gifts that can be used for the kingdom of God to help my life flourish and to help others' lives flourish as well. And those gifts will bring change and they will bring life to those around us. 1 Timothy 4.14 says that we should not neglect our gifts. We need to be using our gifts, the gifts that God has created for, for us to use. The gifts that we have can change others and change ourselves for better in the process. The Word of God, if we read it, tells us. You know, I, I wonder why we're at church sometimes, but one of the other things I, I ponder is what do we think scripture is what do you think the word of god is you know i have heard it said actually sadly from a pastor's wife that the 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 word of god is an ancient text that belongs on a shelf but i've also heard it said that the bible is the word of god and it should be applied to our life those are two extremes i grab on to the latter the bible folks for me for us as a community is the word of god if we really believe the word of god is that is just that the word of god coming from god himself why are we not living into it more why are we not living accordingly now we get in trouble with with it when we try to make it a science book we get in trouble when we try to bring our American politics into it. It is the story of God's relationship with humanity, man and woman. And one of the things we do with the Bible as Christians, I believe, and we, the church has probably done this somewhat, is we mainly look at the resurrection. Now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I'm not trying to downplay it, is amazing. And it is the ultimate for those who follow Jesus. For it is where we find the promise of eternal uh, life. Uh, it, it is where we find salvation. And for many of us, we believe Jesus rising again. In, we believe that he has done that. And we have the promise that we are now heaven bound if we believe that way. But I don't know about you, but as I go through my days, I'm not necessarily focused on my death. It will come, but what about the before? What about life? You know, if we look at the Gospels, yes, the resurrection story is there, but what about the life, the life of Jesus? I believe, folks, we need to concentrate more on the life that is in front of us. What did he teach? What did he do? And when we look at his life, I believe we will see the spiritual gifts. If we look at the life of Jesus, we will see the gifts of the Spirit lived out in amazing ways. We see Jesus healing. We see him having great faith. We see him teaching. We see him encouraging others. And we see exhortation. We need, we need to focus on the life of Christ. And live by that example. For the death and, and, and the resurrection will give us hope in our death. So would it not be true that his life would give us hope in our life? Just something that I have been thinking about after a conversation with a friend. And, and maybe it's just basic, pretty basic. Jesus says, I have come that you would have life and have it full or abundantly. And one of the ways I find fullness is through the life of Christ. Not necessarily in his death 
and resurrection, but in his life. And that, my friend, is living into the spiritual gifts. Living into them so that it would build the kingdom, have our lives flourish, give us life. You know, we, we tend to focus. We tend to go back to the days that are good, right? We, we, we all do that in different parts of our life. You know, I have recently read a book. In fact, I read it somewhat this week, this example. And I'm reading it for a class. It's called Na- Navigating the Future. And the book references the story that from Christmas, the Christmas story. You're probably familiar with it, with Ebenezer Scrooge um, and the ghosts of Christmas past and Christmas present and Christmas future. And the author of the book says that we need to look at that story in a different way. And we can learn from it. As he wakes up from his scrooginess, we always look at the end of the story. And we see Scrooge waking up from his scrooginess into the spirit of Christmas. But what if we looked at this story in a different way? What if we looked at it as a person who was able to, to learn from the past, live in the present with the hope and idea of making a difference in the future? You know, we hope, and when we read that story of Scrooge, uh, how, how many times have you seen it redone? I've seen it redone millions, it seems like, of times. We hope we will see a difference in his future. Scrooge became a, uh, a person who was able to, to look at life as a whole. The past, the present, and the future. Maybe that is a life lesson for us, too. You know, the days are changing. And and, and new brings with it the challenges, right? You may be like me, (laughs) and I see a few out there like me this morning, and those, those hair days are gone. They're in the past. But there is hope for a different and brighter tomorrow, especially if the light bounces off of our heads, right? And there's a hope for newness and a better place when we use our gifts individually and together, living after the example of Jesus Christ and finding life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the way that you have gifted us. We thank you for the way that you bring new life to us. We pray this simply in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we take some time to pray together this morning, are there any things that we need to be lifting up? Praises, concerns? Dawn. Ralph Ocker and Nancy Jo Ralph pray for their health. One of the things that Nancy Jo is struggling with is, is her mom. Um, she's um, been not good and then she gets a little bit better and it's just been a journey for them. So we can be praying for that and for Ralph as he continues to struggle with cancer. Uh, we can probably lift up Linda Harrison when we think about that as well um, and her struggle with that. As well. Any other things to be lifting up? Janet. John, who fell in the ice. There's so, s- different people that I've heard that has have fallen, and um, but John really did a, a job on his like jaw and yeah, on his face. So we pray for John. Anything else? Anything to celebrate today? One of the things that we celebrated at the the early service and uh, and Joy, you can help me with this. Is the wrestling team um, is going on to state. So we can be celebrating that. I also want to celebrate just being with you folks this morning and for the many gifts that I see lived out through the 
the lives of you and what you do for the kingdom of God just in your own lives. Um, I, I praise God for that. Well, let's take some time to pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can gather. We thank you for the many gifts that you bestow on us so that we can live into different times and do your work. Lord, we, we pray that you would continue to teach us that. Lord, as we pray this morning too, we ask for forgiveness for the times that we do not follow, that we are distracted, that we seek other things. Because we do that. And Lord, we, we just pray that you would continue to lead us back to who you are. We thank you for the work on the cross and for what Jesus has, has done for us. But we also thank you so much for his life and what that teaches us. Lord, if we lived into that, we would find the hope that you can only bring. And Lord, as we pray that this morning, we, we also have some joys and concerns, and we lift up those things to you. We pray for Ralph and for Linda and for many others who are fighting the fight of cancer. We want to pray for Karen um, this morning who is getting used to a new reality in her life after amputation. We lift her up. Lord, we also want to pray for uh, John, who is struggling from a fall. For Nancy Jo, as she is struggling with her own health concerns, but also with the concerns of her mom. We thank you for the work that you are doing there. And Lord, we, we also want to thank you and praise God for the different activities that we have for, for the folks in our community, the, the wrestling uh, team. We thank you for what they're doing. And we pray for them as they move forward. And Lord, as we pray this this morning, we, we also want to lift up those who are caregivers, both in the hospital and in the, the, the homes. Lord, we, we lift them up to you. We thank you for the work that is being done. For, for those who are struggling with emotional issues, Lord, we lift up. For those who are struggling with financial issues, we, we pray for them. And we, we pray that you would help us to be the church in those areas. We pray for those within and outside the walls and of this place. And we just pray for a work to be done. Help us to be a city on a hill, a light that is shining brightly. And Lord, as we pray that this morning, we thank you for the many words that you have brought into our life and also the way that you taught us how to pray. And we pray that prayer this morning saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So one of the things that we continue to praise God for is the way that this church has given so that the ministry of the church can keep going. Let me remind you, if you feel called to be a part of the offering this morning, our plates are by the door. But let's take some time and reflect and give up our praises to a God who loves us and has given to us.
Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can gather and we pray that you would bless the offering we receive today. Bless us in the process and may it be used to communicate the kingdom of God. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's stand and worship together. I see the work of your hands. God makes you stand in a heavenly dance, oh God. All that you are is so overwhelming. I hear the sound of your voice. All at once, it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God. All that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed. I know life can get pretty distracting. I know it can get pretty hectic. I know things change. You know, our bodies change. Our, our physical appearance changes. 
as we grow older. That happens in the body of the church as well. And as we move forward, folks, let us concentrate and let us think, look around you this morning, the, the beautiful gifts that God has given us to the beautiful people that God has created. And let's go forth with the grace of the Son, the love of the Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's go forth in peace. Amen. Thank you.